Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Thomas Griss, Consultant in Laboratory Medicine and Pathology at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Dr. Griss discusses the validation and verification of multi-target testing in the microbiology laboratory. Thank you, Dr. Griss, for presenting with us today. Thank you for the introduction. Firstly, I have no disclosures. Today's talk will be specific to laboratories that are accredited by the College of American Pathologists. Each laboratory is responsible for items on their own inspection checklist. Decisions are the ultimate responsibility of the laboratory director, and this talk shares the experience of one laboratory validating a multi-target assay. Multi-target tests are becoming more common in clinical microbiology. These tests use a single specimen such as nasopharyngeal swab to generate many results. These tests are rapid, often only taking one to two hours, but typically are completed within one day. Some of the first multi-target panels were testing for respiratory pathogens. There are many multi-target assays that have now been approved or cleared by the United States Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. Multi-target tests raise several issues that need to be addressed. Validation and verification are terms that describe the process of assuring that a test is performing correctly. This process becomes more complex for multi-target testing because of the number of pathogens tested. These panels are typically among the highest reagent costs in the laboratory and will also be billed at the highest dollar amounts. For these reasons, providers need education as to the most appropriate times to order the test. The test should be ordered when it will provide actionable information. For instance, if the identification of a viral respiratory pathogen will lead to decreased antimicrobial use and or lead to more rapid discharge of a patient from the hospital, then the test will likely have a very positive cost-to-benefit ratio. Benefits to the patient and institution may include things like decreased length of stay and lower risk of inducing Clostridium difficile colitis by reducing exposure to antimicrobials. Benefits to the laboratory may include better use of full-time equivalent technologist time, ability to report out respiratory pathogen testing on all shifts, and higher margin tests. The College of American Pathologists, or CAP, checklist includes this handy table to determine which parts of the checklist apply to various testing situations. FDA-approved or cleared sources require less work than the laboratory-developed tests because the manufacturer has already completed a lot of the characterization of the assay. CAP allows the use of the FDA-cleared or approved target and signal amplification methods and sequencing checklist in the situation of a non-FDA-approved or cleared specimen source. An example of this might be the use of bronchoalveolar lavage specimens on a multi-target respiratory pathogen panel that was only FDA approved or cleared for nasal pharyngeal swabs. The Clinical Laboratory Improvement Act, or CLIA, provide requirements that laboratories must follow when characterizing the performance of their tests. More work is required for the laboratory developed tests. In this table, I show that FDA cleared and approved tests must be characterized in terms of accuracy, which includes sensitivity and specificity, precision, reference range, and reportable range. Laboratory-developed tests, in addition, need to be evaluated for their analytical sensitivity, or lower limit of detection, as well as analytical specificity, which includes things like cross-reactivity with other targets and also interferences from components that may be part of the specimen. One note is that the reportable range is really for quantitative assays only. Today, I want to share with you our experience validating a respiratory pathogen panel. We validated two instruments over a three-week period with primarily spiked specimens. There are several companies that are making whole organism control material that can be used for quality control and also for spiking in validation experiments. We have found that it was helpful to be efficient in how we use the results to best meet the requirements of accuracy, precision, and also testing specimen stability. One specimen often was able to fulfill several of these criteria. For the reference range, labs can use manufactured data or FDA-approved and cleared sources. This is our spiking scheme that we created to help guide our testing. Each row shows one day of testing and one uh, spiked tube. 
the columns represent the different organisms that are tested in our respiratory panel. The green boxes represent organisms that were spiked in that tube. We spiked up to five organisms per tube and then froze them. We spiked some analytes into every vial to get 20 days of precision and for that we chose an RNA virus, a DNA virus, and a bacterium to represent the different types of organisms. All were spiked at a low level to try to approximate the lower limit of detection. This included counting colonies for bordetella pertussis from culture so that we knew that we were at the manufacturer's stated lower limit of detection. For within day precision, we separated testing by four hours to verify a four hour room temperature stability. That same spiking mixture was tested three days apart to verify three day refrigerator stability. This scheme allowed for precision, accuracy, stability, and some limited lower limit of detection all to take place in a short period of time. We supplemented this scheme of spiking with clinical specimens comparing to other assays. Each analyte in total was tested at least three times in separate days and across our two instruments. Thus, each instrument detected each target at least once. It is important to remember to blind these specimens to the techs who are testing them for best validation results. This is how we scored the results. The assay happened to get every analyte correct for each spiked specimen. Counting each reaction separately, there were 363 separate reactions, of which 177 were positive. Other checklist items to consider from the CAP checklist include the following. For a single cartridge or pouch type of setup, the daily internal controls can be relied upon after uh, the following study has occurred, where external controls are compared to built-in for at least 20 consecutive days. By spreading our validation over three weeks, we met the 20-day requirement. If the multi-target assay is a plate type of setup, then multiple run controls may be necessary. If so, those should be rotated among all the analytes periodically. For the new lot verification, a good strategy is to run two controls that are each positive for half of the analytes, such that each analyte has a positive and negative control. For instance, control mixture A may contain organisms 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, and control mixture B would contain organisms 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. That way, within two runs, you've tested positive and negative for each target. Also, for the new lot verification, each analyte must be tested for with each new lot to assure that each target is working. Finally, if the laboratory validates specimen collection devices or sources that are different than the package insert, the laboratory must perform validation studies to document adequate performance of the test. The details of this are up to the lab director, but it is important to make sure that the lab has confidence in the results that they are reporting out. For laboratory developed or modified FDA cleared or approved assays, laboratories must be sure to validate each source that will be used in the assay. Again, this may include spiked specimens, but it is important to perform complete validation for these sources to be assured that the performance characteristics of the assay are as expected. In conclusion, validation and verification of multi-target testing is complex. It is important to check with your accreditation agency for specific requirements. Thorough planning of these studies will lead to efficient use of specimens, reagents, and technologist time. For any questions or requests, please send an email to the address shown on the screen, or for more information, visit mayomedicallaboratories.com or call Mayo Lab Inquiry. Thank you.